Hey y'all, we have Innovative Industrial Properties third quarter 2022 results. This is also IIPR. Um, so I have the third quarter results pulled up. I have the second quarter 2022 results pulled up. And then I have the third quarter 2021 so we can look at, look at year over year numbers. Uh, so first, let's go over the third quarter 2022 results. And... And then we, once we finish this, we'll compare quarter over quarter, and then we'll compare year over year and see how everything's doing. Uh, and then we'll look at some of their, some of their spreadsheets that they have attached. So this is $368.6 million of new investments in the first nine months of 2022, which is 30% increase year over year in total revenue. Uh, and then just keep in mind that they say the first nine months. So they're saying basically year to date. And uh, so that number will seem more elevated than some of the numbers that they report here. Divide by three for your average uh, of new investment. For this particular quarter anyway. And then let's see the highlights. Total revenue of approximately $70.9 million, which is a 32% increase from the prior year's quarter but this is actually only a uh, four hundred thousand dollar increase quarter over quarter so last quarter this was 70.5 and we'll get into that prior quarter a little bit later but just to let you know that the revenue was basically flat quarter to quarter and then they recorded a net income attributable to common stockholder of approximately 37.3 million for the quarter or 1.32 per diluted share and a FFO of approximately 60.1 million or 2.13 cents per diluted share. And so whenever, you know, uh, this is the number that people like to look at for REITs, real estate uh, investment trusts. So whenever you're looking at whether it's a Robinhood app or a Yahoo Finance app or uh, various brokerages or like uh, Wall Street Bull, stuff like that, you may see this 2.13 per share number. And they've done this in, in prior quarters. Like last quarter, they posted a 2.14 EPS. But this is the true EPS here, 1.32. So not to say that, for example, the prior quarter when they said a 2.14 per diluted share for their AFFO doesn't mean that there was a significant de decrease of this 1.32 here. This is saying this quarter was 2.13 compared to last quarter's 2.14. But for all stocks, this is the earnings, the actual earning per share here. And a lot of these apps usually, instead of reporting that number, they report this elevated number here just because that's commonplace with REITs. Anyway, they increased their dividend per share of $0.05. Cents, and they already paid that out on October 14th. And da, 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 ba, ba. let's see what else. They acquired a Massachusetts property, fully built out and operational. Uh, it was a sale lease back transaction for Cure Leaf Holdings for $21.5 million. And then they sold a Pennsylvania property that was being leased to a subsidiary of Myatri Holdings LLC for $23.5 million. And look at this price per square foot that they sold it for here, four sixty one compared to uh, what they purchased. No, they fully built out. And, uh, hold on, fully built out, sale lease back in her transaction, right? So here they, they uh, lease for 207 per square foot. Here they sold this property for 461 per square foot. And this could be, you know, different purposes for these facilities as to the discrepancy in the pricing per square foot there. Generated total revenue of two hundred five point nine million uh, year to date. One hundred eleven point nine million year to date, or four dollars six cents per diluted share, 
and AFFO of 6.33 per diluted share. Um, let's see. This year alone, they acquired nine properties and ex executed nine lease amendments at existing properties to provide funding for additional improvements. Um, and this amount was 368.6 million, as we saw at the top of the page. And rent collection for their operating portfolio uh, was 97% for nine months uh, this quarter. So, or year to date, nine months year to date. And this, inc this excluded the impact of security deposits applied for non-payment of rent by King Gardens. Um, let's see. What else? What else? Okay, so their portfolio comprises of 111 properties across 19 states with 8.7 million rentable square feet. They have 109 properties that they're operating, which is, yep, okay. And constructing two properties. So they actually have 109 that are up and running. And they're constructing two. And an expansion on a property where King Gardens continues to op occupy the property. Okay, so they're actually expanding uh, in a King's Garden facility. So I know there's a lot of concern out there about King's Garden not paying their rent. Uh, what was that in the second quarter and being reflected in this quarter and they did say this 97% of the portfolio they're collecting rent on uh, and that is excluding the impact of security deposits applied for non-payment by King's Garden so ex take King's Garden out of the picture 97% is what they are collecting on there properties and then they're expanding at a King's Garden facility so that's a little interesting um, they're 100% leased uh, weighted average lease length 15.5 years let's see no tenant represents more than 14% of the total portfolio no state represents more than 17% of the total portfolio uh, Multi, Multi-state operators represent 85% of the operating portfolio. Okay, so if they have a company they're leasing to in Pennsylvania, uh, very likely that, that that company will be leasing from them in Texas or somewhere else. It's just kind of the logic behind that. The building up customers that operate in multi-states, 85%. Public company operators represent 55% of the operating portfolio. So other companies you'll see on the stock exchange are about half of their portfolio. The other half are private companies. Um, so industrial, which is cultivation and processing, represents 90%. Retail, actual dispensing of the marijuana products, represents 3%. And Places where it's all in one is 7%. Okay, so they're mostly cultivation and processing. Um, I'm going to skip all this because we basically just read the, the highlights. Uh, I'm going to come down here to their asset uh, income statement here. So this is the first page I'd like to compared to the prior quarter. So we're gonna take note of a couple things here. Let's take note of the total real estate and dollar amount, uh, the land, the buildings and improvements, construction and progress, this will be a good one to take into account. And then we'll look at this, this total number here. So we'll look at the real estate, the construction, and the total here and uh, also total assets what else let's see yeah let's look at those numbers there so uh, cash as well cash is an important one this is 76 million in cash here so 
uh, all navigate there on this page, which is the second quarter of this year. So we have about $4,000 less in real estate, uh, less land, of course, about the same in construction. This prior quarter had about $8,000 more uh, last quarter in construction. And this total real estate, $2 million. Uh, actually, this is this is in thousands, so two hundred million, one hundred twenty-five thousand, uh, or no, I'm sorry, two billion, one hundred twenty-five million. Yeah. Uh, so then let's look at the current quarter. Is about forty million more in net net real estate. Oh, I'm looking at, oh, here we go. I'm supposed to be looking at this total real estate here. Yeah, so this is last quarter, 125 million. So we have an increase of 50 million in total real estate uh, this current quarter. And that is 8 million less, 8 million less in construction so they completed eight million uh, of construction and then picked up other facilities for an increase of 50 million dollars worth of total real estate and then the cash 76 million for the current current quarter which is about 30 million dollars more than the previous quarter and then the total assets 2.4 billion yeah, only a $5 million increase in total assets quarter over quarter. So, and that was mainly due to investments. Investments are down, of course, as the market crashes. Uh, okay, let's move on. That could have been a little confusing there, bouncing between the two. Um, the net income quarter over quarter is going to be about the same as we saw at the top. In fact, it's even slightly, slightly less than last quarter. And anything I want to take note of here? No, but let's look at last year. We have a pretty significant gain year over year. And total revenues. They are experiencing a greater proportion of operating expenses compared to their revenue. So their, their growth is definitely slowing in terms of net income. Uh, if, if that's just a hiccup due to the market, the conditions, rising interest rates and everything, maybe they're slowing down in that regard uh, and then experiencing greater administrative costs uh, that is to be seen, but well, let's continue here first. Let's see anything else I want to pick up. I don't think there's anything else I want to pick up. So all in all this quarter, um, and I, I'll compare the net income from uh, the previous quarter here so we can see how in line it is yeah 142 a share to 133 a share for this quarter and that is uh, actually pretty significant drop off actually per share and the amount of shares outstanding are about the same not too big of a, a jump there, so that net income being 39, so a miss of 2 million quarter over quarter just about, that is affecting their earnings per share quite a bit there. Uh, so they are down slightly, but the revenue was actually up quarter over quarter which this was supposed to be a disastrous quarter compared to uh, short sellers and there was a you know even spurred a lawsuit being very 
very the alleged the allegation was that they are very uh, concentrated in just a few just a few tenants to the point where they were misleading investors and King's Garden defaulting on that one or being delinquent on that one facility was thought to be very devastating devastating for the company but as we saw at the top of the page they are collecting 97 percent of rent from their tenants as well as investing in a king's garden facility that is that kind of downplays the the fears that the king's garden situation is as serious as it was taken so that's the big takeaway from this quarter, I would say, as well as not too significant a drop in net income. And um, AFFO was only down one cent per share, quarter over quarter. In fact, it was even the same, 60.1 million. 60.1 million. But this cent per diluted share here due to them issuing more shares. So that remaining the same and the net income being just a $2 million difference quarter over quarter. Revenue being up. That's pretty significant. Uh, the company stayed, stayed pretty flat quarter over quarter even though this was thought to, to be pretty devastating. So... Um, that puts us at a PE ratio, which, you know, technically doesn't say much for a REIT, but you will have some investors that look at it. So at $106 per share, that puts us at about a 20 PE ratio, I would say. And the market cap is somewhere around $2.7 billion. Um, and they're paying out $1.80 per share. So company is looking strong, and we'll wait for next quarter to kind of make any judgment calls and see if they grow or if they continue to be stagnant who knows maybe even shrink uh, next quarter so we'll keep an eye on that thanks